you are seeing immediately one of the challenges of biplanes, of these uh, these pits biplanes, is ah uh, ah uh, see ah uh, is that they ah uh, uh, I told you I told you I was gonna crash. Tally ho, fellow flight nerds. This is Ben Johnson with FlightNerdAirForce.com. Flight Nerd Air Force is an online community that gathers aviation enthusiasts from all over the globe to explore the world of flight, crush our FAA written exams, and nudge fellow flight nerds off the couch and into the cockpit so that we can firewall the throttle of our passion for the world of flight. Today is video number four, our final video in our series about the expansion pack, the Reno Air Races expansion pack for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, I know you're going to uh, enjoy this video. Uh, to be honest, I haven't flown the biplanes yet. Each of our videos, what we're doing is we're flying the different classes of aircraft that are available in this expansion pack, which is a different class of aircraft racing uh, that happens at the Reno Air Races. Again, the Reno Air Races happen uh, every year out in Reno, Nevada, uh, where folks fly uh, high performance aircraft, low and fast around uh, oval tracks in the desert outside of Reno, Nevada, around telephone poles called pylons. Uh, and we're gonna do that with you today. Uh, the four classes of aircraft available in the expansion pack are the jets, the L-39 Albatross jets, the P-51 Mustang Unlimited class, the uh, T-6 Texan class, and now what we're gonna fly today is the biplane class uh, where we'll be flying the Pitts S1. So that's going to be really exciting. I think the thing we're going to find, one of the fun things about this is flying these four different kinds of aircraft, we can see the differences in what they're like, how they handle, and what they're for. Uh, we'll see that. We'll talk about it a little bit as we fly. But today, I'm a little nervous because we're flying these biplanes. These Pitts are really squirrely. They're really agile, nimble, even more so than the P-51 Mustang. I think I can pretty much tell you what might happen in this race at some point is that I roll the airplane all the way over and I pull to make a turn and I just dig right into the desert sand. Inverted and down. I think that's what's gonna happen at some point during this race, at least once. <laughs> so they're tough to stay on top of. Uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, like we have been doing for our videos, we're gonna run our uh, the time trial to see if uh, we can beat our best time. I don't know if I've flown this, so I don't even know if I have a best time. I mean, I'm gonna be setting my best time today. But again, for each of these classes, we have a set of 10 liveries. Let's take a look at the liveries we have going here. Uh, the Dancing Rocket is our number one. Uh, Smoking Hot is number two. The Yellow Bomber. The Panther, Tango Tango, Second Hand, Racer X, Nice and Easy, Miss Diane, <clears throat> Toto, and Blackhawk. I'm going to step outside of what I normally do. I, I like this purple one yellow paint scheme here. Again, you can fly pretty much any of these airplanes. They have standardized the performance of the aircraft. So all of the Pitts fly the same. All of the Texans fly the same. All the Mustangs fly the same and the Albatrosses. They all fly the same as each other. Um, obviously a Pitts flies different than a Mustang, but of the Pitts, all these Pitts fly the same. So really what you're looking at is a different looking airplane. Okay, And that allows you to really test your metal uh, more on the skill of your ability to fly and your piloting skills than it is on the machinery, the piece of machinery and the performance of that machinery. Now again, the re in the real world, the Reno Air Races, these folks are tweaking these uh, to try and get them as efficient and uh, aerodynamically sound and straight and clean and the engines are tip top shape, all that kind of stuff. That adds to performance. So, um, uh, so and the other fun thing is you can take these airplanes and fly them out in the real world. So if you want to go, of your flight simulator I mean, you can take them outside of the Reno Air Race expansion pack and go fly to your local, be in your local airport and fly an air show with your Pitts 
here for your friends at your local airport. So, uh, and go have fun uh, with your friends, uh, flying together with your friends. So, all right, we're gonna go uh, and start our flight here. Heading into the time trial. <clears throat> Again, I don't think I have a best lap on this already, so I don't think there should be a ghost to chase. But we're about to find out. Maybe I've forgotten. You know, I bet one of my kids has played this. So maybe there is a ghost to chase. I may have to get away from my ghost here in just a second. There we go. Let's see how long it takes for me to crash. There we go. Down. Whoo! This is already challenging. You are seeing immediately one of the challenges of biplanes, of these uh, these pits biplanes, is ah ah see ah is that they ah, ah it's, I told you I told you I was gonna crash. Is that not only are they nimble, but there's not a lot of visibility out of these crazy things. Holy moly! Whoo! I think the only reason. I'm flying faster than the ghost right now is because the ghost probably struggled as much as I am. Uh, this is super touchy. You can kind of see I'm not flying as fast uh, as I might. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, ah. Holy cow. This is the this is by far the hardest of the planes I've flown so far. I almost can't talk to you right now because it's so hard. Um, because it's 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 touchy. These planes just are touchy like this. You are constantly on them. There is no such thing. Uh, I had I had a pit pilot once tell me there is no such thing as gliding to the runway when you land one of these. You are hand controlling it. You fly it to the runway. You have to make it go down and touch the runway and stay there. It is, uh, they are squirrely, squirrely airplanes. Whew. This is a handful. But you can see we're flying much slower than we would in the jet or the P-51. So, in a way, much more squirrely uh, because we don't have the speed um, the P-51 is very nimble, but it's also we're also moving so fast when we're flying that thing that um, you don't change the, the the input that you put into the controls doesn't change your angle of uh, like your direction as much. Uh, but you when you do make a change like that, you cover way more ground. Here we're covering less ground, but man, you change direction fast. I'm scared to uh, turn and fly knife edge with this thing because I'm afraid I'm going to auger into the ground with it. <clears throat> Alright, here we go. Pylon number four. Whoa! 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 <laughs> see? If I see six, I'll be lucky. There we go. I went way wide on five there. My only saving grace is that I think whoever flew, maybe it was one of my kids, flew uh, this before, probably spent half the time crashing. This is hard. This is really hard. I ain't got much, that's for sure. If I survive, we'll be doing good today. Now imagine trying to fly this in formation with six or seven other aircraft, other pitses, trying to avoid each other. Actually, I should say this, uh, in, the, in the biplane class like this, they do things a little differently. You're not all flying out there together. What they do is they stagger. I think they have flights of three. Uh, and they all line up on the runway together. And uh, three airplanes take off. And then four second uh countdown timer has started and after four seconds 
the second group of three is able to hit the throttle and take off. Uh, and then after another, after another four seconds, the third group is able to go. So really what you have is formations of three and four second intervals. And that gives them all some spacing from one another. So it's a little bit safer in that sense. You don't have quite as many airplanes flying together as a group. And then what they do is if you're in the first group, your race time is your actual time. Uh, but if you're in the second group, they subtract four seconds. If you're in the third group, they subtract eight and so on to um, compare accurate times, if that makes sense. So. This is challenging flying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Ugh. Keep my altitude down. I didn't think altitude would be a problem on this one, but. It is easy to get creeping up here. There we go, I think this is it. like that. Whew, that plane's a handful. I didn't do a lot of talking on that because it was all I could do to hang on to that thing. Uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't quite fulfill my own prophecy and go inverted and then pull into the ground, but I definitely cra crashed into the ground. It, it, this, this pits rolls so fast, so fast, that it's hard to not go inverted. So that was very, very touchy flying. Maybe your stick has a little bit smoother feel than mine does, your joystick, but man, it was it was challenging flying. So uh, I hope uh, this was a fun flight for you. Uh, it's a fun flight for me. It's really challenging. And I think one of the great, again, a, a couple of good benefits of this. Number one, it will, uh, flying this Reno Air Race like this will challenge your abilities as a pilot to see how the airplane's going to act, um, to see how you can make it turn, how you can't make it turn, what it will do, what it won't do, and get a feel for the airplane that you're flying. Uh, precision flying, um, staying tight in the turns. If you fly with other pilots, uh, staying in tight with other pilots without actually hitting them is challenging in and of itself, not to mention the race that you're actually doing. But the other thing is great is being able to compare these different airplanes in similar situations. Now the courses are slightly different. You saw how short the biplane uh, course was there versus the jet and the P-51 course, which are far, far bigger, far wider courses because you're going that much faster. Uh, but um, you just see how different they are as airplanes. And you get to you learn about how different airplanes do different things. And often airplanes are built for specific purposes. Um, and you often, one will be great in one area of aviation and another will be great in another, but they're terrible to do each other's jobs. So you see some of that play out here uh, in this. I hope you really enjoy this. Uh, and I hope that if you're as excited about the world of aviation as I am, that you would come and join us in the Flight Nerd Air Force main hangar community. It's our free community where you can come in and uh, see uh, what we're talking about in there. Uh, I often share things about uh, aviation that are fun and exciting. Uh, bits of information about real world aviation, not just simulators and things like that. Um, but how airplanes work, what they do, aerodynamics, um, just the world of aviation in general, air traffic control, weather, safety, maintenance, 
about building your own aircraft, all kinds of fun topics like that. So I would love to have you join us inside there. Uh, if you want to do that, there should be a link in the description below this video where you can check that out. Or you can join us at www.flightnerdairforce.com. I'd also love it if you, if you enjoyed this video, if you got some great content out of it, if you could uh, like, subscribe, click the bell notification button. It would really help out our channel as we're growing here and trying to get this great information out to all our fellow flight nerds there on YouTube. So um, thanks again for watching. I also want to say Happy New Year. I hope you're uh, going to be enjoying, if you've enjoyed 2021, I know it hasn't it's been challenging in a lot of ways, but uh, looking forward to 2022, uh, the coming year. Um, and so I hope you really enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful uh, coming new year. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.